The U.S. House of Representatives will hold a vote to impeach President Donald Trump, this over his alleged role in last week's violent takeover of Congress. Democrats say the president encouraged his supporters to attack the Capitol building. He's formally being charged with inciting insurrection. Let's get analysis from Professor of International Relations at Bits University, John Stremlau. Thanks for your time, Prof. We appreciate it. Interesting that some Republicans are actually saying they will join Democrats to impeach Trump. Well, the most interesting of those is Liz Cheney, who's number three in the Republican House leadership and the daughter of former Secretary of Defense and Vice President Dick Cheney. And she has come out publicly in support of impeachment. And even more intriguing is the signals that Mitch McConnell, the uh, majority leader at the moment of the Senate, is, is sending. He's never going to speak to Trump again, he says, and that, in fact, he supports the idea of impeachment and would like to see the Senate grapple with a trial. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to see when that's going to happen and how, because Biden faces the same challenges that Ramaphosa faces here. Uh, a runaway uh, COVID uh, crisis and the desperate need for vaccine rollout in a quick and effective way. So it's going to be a very interesting uh, a few months. Yeah. So this move to impeach Donald Trump at this stage of his presidency, the right one, or is it just to make sure that he never gets back into that position in future? Because that's what I've been reading about. Well, um, we're not really sure what you can do to hold him accountable, but hold him accountable you must. And there is this desire not to let this thing uh, drag on because uh, Jim Clyburn, who was a very big Biden supporter, the African-American senior uh, uh, Democrat in the, in the uh, House of Representatives, said, let's give Biden 100 days to deal with the COVID crisis, to deal with the economy, to deal with... Uh, racial injustice and the climate change, which is the same agenda that Cyril Ramaphosa has here. And I sort of said, well, maybe that's like uh, letting putting Ace Magashulu's uh, uh, allegations of step aside aside. But you can't really do that. You know, the NEC has to meet on that. And indeed, what they are now talking about is maybe having half day because uh, for the for the uh, trial of the impeachment. But there's never been a trial once the president has left office. And so they're breaking legal ground here, maybe. And there will be constitutional issues. But if they could go forward with the trial, as most people think they can, then you'd do it half day on ratifying the, the cabinet for Biden and half time um, and, and on uh, the, the legislative uh, issues he wants uh, rapidly done, like in COVID, and then spend the rest of the day on the on the trial. But it's it's a very tricky moment because you don't want to let Trump off the hook. Yeah. So outside of Congress, and if this doesn't get to a point where we see it being debated and action taken against him, Donald Trump is still losing support within the Republican Party, right? Well, that certainly appears to be the case. He did get 73 million votes, and there is a core um, uh, base that, that won't, is unshakable. And, and there is a great deal of worry that on Inauguration Day, there will be some uh, attempted violence in state capitals around the country by the same crowd as well as in Washington, where they're deploying, I think, 15,000 uh, uh, National Guard's troops, more, more troops than are currently U.S. troops than are currently in Iraq and, and Afghanistan combined. So it's, it's a very um, tense uh, moment. But Biden is himself very reassuring. He is not saying very much, and rightly so. He is confident that he'll have a safe swearing in and uh, get on with the business of governing. And that would be a very welcome change from the tumultuous uh, Trump years. And given what we've seen happen with Donald Trump and how he's handled this uh, transition, do you think he has any future in politics in the United States after this? Well, that's what everyone's asking. And it does seem like his support is eroding, as you suggested, also within the Republican Party, which has largely been its enablers. And so we're going to have to uh, watch that with, with care. But uh, the, the fact that he would be down at the uh, wall uh, along Mexico uh, yesterday and, and then spouting out that, well, he's against all violence. And we know what the videotapes uh, shows of his instigating the march on the Capitol uh, on the 6th of uh, January. And so I just think maybe he's run out of room for persistently lying and changing the story to fit, fit the convenience of the moment. And, and uh, you can't have presidential leadership with anyone as disingenuous as that. But uh, that's Trump. And we'll see 
Uh, but I, I do think you're right to focus on is ebbing support. This still will require America to build back a confidence that it can be a reliable partner in the future because it did elect Donald Trump after all. Yeah, definitely the case. So thank you so much for your insights. Appreciate it. Professor of International Relations at Bits University, John Stremlau.